This program is brought to you by First National Bank of Botswana. FNB, how can we help you? The relationship between landlords and their tenants has been that of cat and mouse for time immemorial, especially in the residential real estate industry. Although renting provides tenants with benefits of fairly fast availability and choice, this convenience has proven many a times to be sticky for a lot of tenants. Issues such as unlawful evictions, security deposit misunderstandings, a reserved right of admissions for tenants' guests, and structural maintenance issues have all left a bitter taste in the mouth of many lessees. Much as many will argue that the flexibility enjoyed by tenants due to renting must be appreciated, time has proven that that alone is not enough, as the governing body for the real estate leaves many tenants unprotected in matters of client-landlord relationships. Good evening and welcome to First Issues. I'm Bonatron Thank you so much for joining us on the programme. Such instances as a tenant not getting back their security deposit at the end of the lease or a landlord refusing to uptake maintenance on their unit because it is not part of the agreement are some of the common tales that we've heard before. Tonight, we speak to representatives from the Real Estate Association Council to ask, amongst other questions, what should tenants understand about their leases before signing them when must a security deposit be paid back to the tenant? And should the tenant ever withhold rent to deal with matters of conflict? Joining us to help us answer these questions is Nelta Musimanehape of Tempest Gold, a real estate and prop tech company. First and foremost, as a realtor yourself, what must tenants understand before they get into an agreement with um, a landlord? I think the first thing that tenants need to understand is that a lease is a legally binding contract mm. between a landlord and a tenant. In this instance, a landlord is referred to as a leaser mm -hmm. and uh, the tenant is referred to as the leasee. They need to be very careful and thoroughly read what the details of the lease entail, <coughs> especially the clauses. What I've noticed is most uh, tenants only rush to know how much the rent is, how much the security deposit is, and the duration. Mm. But the other clauses, such as uh, the termination procedures, such as uh, the maintenance um, works that they are responsible for and the ones that the landlord is responsible for they are usually not aware of mm. so um things that uh, a, a lisa a leasee needs to be aware of it's uh every single clause don't only focus on how much money you have to pay every month you need to know your responsibilities as a tenant and you also need to understand the landlord's responsibilities and where they end and where yours begin um, so we're talking about the clauses, right, um, you know, understanding that, but what in the instance of you not being happy with a particular clause, what happens there? Do you now say that I don't want this or then I'm going to look for another house or is there room for negotiating what the lease um, clauses and, you know, I don't know, agreements, if you may, um, yeah. Well, a landlord prepares the lease agreement mm -hmm. and uh, obviously since they're the ones who are preparing it and it's their property, yeah. they usually do it in their favor. Yeah. So a tenant needs to thoroughly read, as I've said before, thoroughly read all the clauses <coughs> and if they're not happy with any clauses or they want to negotiate, yeah. they can speak to a landlord mm -hmm. but they need to be aware that usually there's not a lot of room for negotiation mm -hmm. and uh, in that instance it's either a take it or leave it situation or a landlord will be lenient and uh, make a few adjustments but usually it's just a standard lease especially if it's for multi-residentials it's standard across board and um, one or two adjustments may be made for example if I can give you an um, example pertaining to the rental payment mm -hmm. if a, a tenant offers to pay maybe a year in advance mm -hmm. a landlord can be lenient and say okay since you're going to be paying a year in advance I can give you a discount you can pay slightly less than those who are paying on a month-to-month -month basis. What now happens if the landlord says that um, payment is due on the first of every month and then you as a tenant are only able to pay, say maybe on the 10th? Have you seen situations whereby negotiations, negotiations as far as that is concerned, payments are concerned, um, that um, do not favor the landlord? 
um, you know, are made. There are usually clauses in lease agreements mm -hmm. that state what happens if you pay late. Yes. Like you said, if a lease agreement uh, states that you're supposed to pay on the first of every month and you fail to do that, usually a lease agreement will state that failure to pay on the prescribed date will result in you being charged a certain um, interest percentage because you paid late. And that those are some things that tenants need to be aware of in order for them to not accrue um, more expenses because they fail to pay late. On to my next question now is, um, we're talking clauses in the lease um, agreement. So one of the clauses is that a security deposit has to be paid, right. right? So we want to understand why should there be a security deposit, number one? How much is it? Um, what are we using it for? And then in the instance that um, our lease agreement has come to an end, when should the tenant be expecting the payment back? Right. Under what circumstances? Right. Security deposit is usually requested by landlords to protect themselves. For example, if a tenant fails to pay rent, if a, pe a tenant does some damage to the property and they are not willing to pay for it, the security deposit can be able to cover those damages or those arrears that have not been paid, the rental arrears that is. And uh, it's usually, security deposit is usually the first month's rent. Mm. So if your rental is say 5,000 pula, security deposit will also be 5,000 pula. And it is expected before you move in. So in the first month before you move in, you expect to pay the le uh, the rental okay. amount yeah. and you're also ex expected to pay the security deposit now when it comes to um, paying back giving back the security deposit to the tenant mm -hmm. once they vacate the property it's usually also stated in the lease when they should expect it some leases would, would say a tenant should expect the Security deposit 30 days after they're vacated. Some would say 15 days. It's usually prescribed in the um, the lease agreement, and I'd advise tenants to ensure that if that clause is not written in the agreement, they should make sure that they should request for it to be paid because there are certain situations <coughs> whereby tenants struggle to actually get that security deposit paid back mm -hmm. by the by the landlord, and it also it, it, then people will have to start involving uh, the police and involving the legal authorities for them to try and get back that security deposit. We were talking about conflict, you know, resolution of conflict. And it has many at times happened that um, tenants usually withhold um, the rent um, to, 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 to resolve conflict or to get the landlord to do whatever it is that they had asked um, the landlord to do within the unit. Say, for example, maybe there's a, there's a leak in the roof and then they've talked to the landlord for so long about it and the landlord does nothing about it. So is it legal or can a tenant withhold their rent in hopes that the landlord can attend to the matters that they've risen with them? This is where we go back to the lease agreement. Yeah. Uh, these maintenance issues are always <coughs> stated. If, um, I, if I, as the landlord, have to do repairs in my tenant's unit mm. and I fail to do that, usually the landlord, in some cases, they will tell the tenant, you can do the repairs yourself and we'll deduct the costs that uh, were incurred for you to do the repairs from, from your rental. Mm. It's usually prescribed in um, the maintenance clauses of the lease. Mm. So there are some conflicts, of course, that arise in such situations, but tenants also need to realize that, like I said, a lease is a legally binding contract. Yes, the tenant has the responsibilities of honoring that part of the contract, and so do the landlord. So they need to ensure that um, they pay their rent, the, the landlord also in, needs to ensure that the work is done. And if there are conflicts that arise, then we can always go for legal advice to resolve that. Okay, all right. So in short, really, to wrap up our conversation, we were talking about the rights of a, of a, of a tenant, you know, as far as, you know, this whole situation is concerned, you seeking out um, housing for yourself, just the rights. But with every right comes a responsibility. So... Can you sum up some of the responsibility that come with a person being a tenant? Some of the responsibilities that come with uh, being a tenant, obviously, if you're going to come into someone's house and occupy it, you need to make sure that you do take care of the house. Yeah. And in the event that um, you do vacate, you need to restore the house to its original 
state when you moved in. Mm -hmm. For example, if I'm going to move in today and um, I stay for five years or so, and uh, there are a lot of damages that have been done, the holes in the wall, the paint job is bad, you're going to have to uh, paint it freshly again. You're going to have to take care of um, all the broken and the damages, the damaged ish, um, parts of the house and um, restore it to its original condition. Mm. And uh, also the responsibilities, of course, is you need to pay your rent. Mm. You can't stay in a house and not pay rent. That is just uh, one of the main responsibility. Mm. Another responsibility, we have seen situations whereby tenants come into houses, but they don't sign lease agreements. You can't stay in a house without a lease agreement. And I think that should also be a right for yourself. Exactly, you know, to, it protects you. Uh, take, for example, um, informal dwellings, one-bedroom houses, back ha uh, backyard houses. Mm. They typically don't <coughs> have lease agreements. Yeah. And when situations arrive, for example, if there's a roof leakage, Tenant will tell the tenant will tell the landlord, and uh, then it'll start being a conflict of who fixes it. Mm -hmm. If there was a lease agreement, this would be outright stated that the landlord or the tenant is responsible for the fixing. So those are some things that are encouraged tenants who dwell in such um, properties mm -hmm. to try and encourage their landlords, and also landlords need to get into the habit of having uh, lease agreements for their small properties. Our next guest is Real Estate Association Council Chairperson, Mr. Montari Mokedi. Join us again after the break on First Issues. What is the future of help? It's to help people find the great in themselves. The drive. The passion. Help them find their true potential. Help them stretch. Help them grow. That's why we help people help themselves, help the world. Because a little help goes a long, long way. FNB, how can we help you? Thank you so much, Ramo Kiti, for joining us on the program today. So we were talking to uh, Mirelta, um, a colleague of yours, and sort of about the rights and some of the conflicts that arise with um, or between tenants and their landlords. So um, you know, why um, you get um, a tenant landlord um, You find that the landlord is refusing to give back the the the, the the deposit or you find that the landlord or Hana to to maintain the house in such instances whereby um, a resolution um, is not reached between both parties where can a tenant seek um, you know that resolution is there a body that governs such especially on the tenants part yes there is a, a law to that effect it's called tenant uh, controls act mm. unfortunately that act seems not to have been implemented because in that act is the one that calls for a rent tribunal. Mm. So the purpose of that rent tribunal was to deal with issues that you have raised. Mm. But what is happening in <coughs> practice now, we see a situation whereby the lease becomes uh, the tool that tries to resolve those issues. Mm. Because in the lease agreement, there should be a clause that deals with the issues of dispute. If the dispute arises in a, a transaction, the lease uh, between landlord and tenant. In the lease, normally they will say uh, they'll opt for something like arbitration mm -hmm. uh, before they go to the high court, mm -hmm. because the high court is always there available to listen to any other complaints that you may come up. But the process of it is too long, it is too costly. So normally the lease becomes an instrument, really it is used. But I want to go back to the Rent Control Act. Even if you read the, the legislation, the Rent Control Act in its format at the moment, mm -hmm. it really doesn't protect the tenant. Mm -hmm. It is more protecting the landlord than, than the, tenant. the tenant. And, you know, I think it is high time that the government should either take the Rent Tribunal to be part of the Real Estate Professional Act, so it is regulated by Real Estate Advisory Council. So that will mitigate uh, the process of delay, because at the moment, if you have a situation or a scenario like that, you find yourself really a lot of people don't, they don't enter into lease agreement. Mm. 
and therefore the Habana, the legal avenue, ever can do something to protect themselves. Mm. And uh, I think the the problem here in Bona, where a lot of people are in a hurry, desperate to move into a house, mm. he will not even sign it or read the document that is being given to her. If you go to the lower, lower end of the market in terms of rentals and all that, they don't even get into the hut. Mm. And the person moves mm. in. And the following day, the pe after a month or two, there's thinking. another guy who comes with a better money mm. and say to this uh, tenant, the landlord, Ra, I want a room. I'm very desperate to my home. I want a room, but I want a room. I'll pay 1,500. This one out, and then you know the game continues. We need to come up with something that will protect even the low end one because, on most instances, in most cases, they don't want the donuts that are protected because they know they can enter into this agreement. If we were to go back to the issue of landlords now abusing their tenants as far as you know, um, being able to just evict them without notice, etc., because the law is on their side. What measures are there in place to make sure that our landlords are not abusing the system? Seeing that it does not seem to have anybody or any implementation as far as ensuring that um, you know the, 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 the rules and regulations are followed to the latter by the landlord. Uh, what I will advocate for with immediate is to either start implementing the land, uh, rent tribunal body yes. and the rent tribunal body that will now be responsible for that. If to avoid the duplication and having so many uh, boards and all that, mm -hmm. you can merge them mm -hmm. with real, real estate advisory council. Mm -hmm. They can do it because they're also regulating the real estate industry yes. for professionals. So I don't see any problem now them regulating the relationship between tenant and landlord. And advice, which is purely an advice now, mm. I would urge anybody who wants to rent a property should actually insist on having a lease and he must read and understand the lease, the mm. terms of the lease. Because if you take it, we will find that people will not enter into a lease agreement and there's a lot of problems that they face in terms of uh, maintenance. What happens to maintenance if the house is, is leaky? Mm. And then if there is a breakage in the house, what happens? So this helps to reduce the dispute issues between the landlord and tenant. In other uh, uh, territories, there's a very b strong, well-defined uh, landlord tenant uh, act, which protects both the landlord both and- Both parties involved. Uh, yeah. How far are we in having a court that specializes specifically? Because I'm at this point, we're aware that the, the arbitrators and the higher courts are purely um, manned by individuals and professionals who are not vested or who do not specialize in real estate or in construction. How far are we with that process? I think the purpose of that uh, 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 rent, rent Control Act and for it coming up with uh, the tribunal, rent tribunal, yes. was basically to do that, to address that issue, mm -hmm. coming to a court of equity where these matters could be resolved very quickly. Mm -hmm. Halajaka, they have done with the tri land tribunal because it, despite the fact that we have courts, there's a land tribunal that deals with matters, the decisions that the land board, it's a yeah. planning issues and all that. So that was, I think what is lacking now is the implementation of that act. And uh, the, 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 at outside the authority ought to do it mm -hmm. because as the society is now becoming more complex, we see more rented accommodation, and the uh, developers are building for rental market, yes. but there's but no there's regulator no who deals with those yes. kind of issues. Mm -hmm. And also, when they have a dispute with uh, the tenant, mm -hmm. they can just lock him out. Mm -hmm. Because in other uh, uh, jurisdiction, you cannot lock out a tenant for residential accommodation out. Yes. Whether he has paid you, you have to follow a certain process and procedure until you get to that point. You see, the rental market, people are in business of renting mm -hmm. accommodation. Yes. And therefore, it must be regulated. Mm -hmm. It must be controlled. There must be somebody who say, if you are fighting the two of you, what should be the cost? Remedy a tenant or a landlord. So these are the issues that I think are critical and we need to move with pace. And then when we are encouraging people to go into hospitality industry, 
Also, there is issues of rentals. Who determine the prices of these exactly. lodges? Who determine the, the houses mm. uh, rental for catering? Yes. So rental is a very, very becoming a very important instrument. That needs to be regulated. All right, so in short, really, to wrap up this um, conversation that we're having, what is your advice, really, for tenants? Because this is what we're talking about that right here. Tenants must always read the lease agreement. But before they sign, the tenants must engage professionals to assist them in procuring the property that they want to rent. Mm -hmm. What is the future of help? It's to help people find the great in themselves. The drive. The passion. Help them find their true potential. Help them stretch. Help them grow. That's why we help people help themselves, help the world. Because a little help goes a long, long way. FNB, how can we help you? Welcome back to First Issues and to our Own Your Day, Own Your Life productivity segment. I'm Vanessa Rongwenya. In the past few weeks, Professor Kieran Bagat alerted us to the fact that our gut health is highly important, not just for digestion, but also for our optimum mental health and focus. In last week's insert, we were told how to maintain good gut health. Tonight, the professor helps us to identify how to determine if there's an issue to resolve. I think one of, the, one of the things that, that classically occurs is what's called an irritable bowel, where people have a gassy bowel, they have uh, abdominal distension after eating food, they, they, the, the, the stomach begins to cramp and make a lot of noise. People may have constipation, uh, they may not go to the toilet every day. Everybody needs to poop every day. Everybody needs to poop every day. Uh, it is, people often come and say to me, doctor, it's natural for me not to go and have a poop every day. I go every two or three days. It is not natural. You need to empty your bowel every day. If you're not emptying your bowel every day, you have a problem. It may be you're not drinking enough water. It may be that you're not having enough fiber. Or it may be that you've damaged the gut, gut bacteria in your, in your, in your system. So uh, having constipation, having a running stomach, having bloating, having distension after eating certain foods tells you that the gut bacteria are not assisting in the digestion of your system and you, you, you probably are deficient in certain natural bacteria. That is all we had for you on the Gut Health series. Join us again next week, Tuesday, for another informative show. From me, Panat Rongwenya, and the rest of the First Issues team, good night. This program was brought to you by First National Bank of Botswana. FNB, how can we help you?